Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Subscribe to our channel, click that little button there below, and uh, stay tuned. We're going to go over snow removal options for the John Deere 1025R, the John Deere 1 Series, so the 1023E, the 1026R as well. So here we go. Also, before I forget, don't forget to watch the end of the video. I do have an important safety tip there that is going to be hopefully very helpful for new tractor owners, uh, potential tractor owners, and maybe even some that have had a tractor for a while. It's going to help prevent uh, any damage to the tractor, any injuries to the operator, and keep you guys uh, working in good shape. So I've got all the uh, snow removal options here set up, at least all the ones I had in stock. I'm sure you guys can come up with some other snow removal options of your own but uh, this is a pretty good uh, selection here all the way over uh, to this side over here too so a lot of options there we're going to go over it essentially from uh, highest cost to lowest cost uh, a little bit in between there also so you'll get to see a uh, hopefully a, an option that fits your budget and, and fits the application that you're looking to use it for of course i wouldn't be any kind of a salesman at all if i didn't say that uh, all these items are for sale here at good works tractors so shop goodworkstractors.com our inventory does rotate on a regular basis um, so sometimes we have all these options in stock like we do now other times we're just going to have certain options in stock depending on what it is we do sell these snow pushers here uh, brand new so we're going to be able to get those for you all the time essentially but some of the other ones are going to come and go as we get them in with with used tractor packages that we purchase Okay, so here we go. We're going to start out with the uh, highest end snow removal option for the 1025R. And again, this is going to include the 1023E and the 1026R variants of the 1 Series family of tractors. And really, to be honest, it's going to include the older models too, the 2305 and the 2210. And so here we go. This is going to be a 54-inch snowblower. This is going to be a front mount snowblower. It's going to go right on the front of the tractor. You do remove the entire loader assembly. Okay, it's going to mount right down here. Uh, where the uh, this black frame area is there will be a, a couple brackets one along the front here and then a couple on each side that you're gonna um, bolt onto the tractor itself they're gonna stay there uh, they're not gonna be in the way of the mower deck or the loader so they just stay on uh, for the entirety of, of uh, your ownership so again this is a 54 inch variant you can see down here 54 but they do make a 47 inch 47 inch does just barely cover the width of the tracks. The 54 inch is going to give you a little bit of extra room on either side there and, and uh, cut down your, your snow blowing time a little bit as well. Um, so you can see here on the snow blower, you've got a couple hydraulic hoses here, and those are going to control the chute so that you can angle it left to right. Um, you're going to do so because when you unplug your loader, you actually plug in these hoses here into the the loader ports there and you're going to use your joystick to, to rotate that left and right so the other two ports are going to be used by the quick hitch and this cylinder here which is going to you can see the hoses here you got one and two and they're going to actually raise it up and down and now this uh, specific quick hitch here is for a two series but so it'll look slightly different for the one series for the 1025r and and so on but it's the exact same premise um, this one actually has an extra cylinder there that we'll get to in a little bit also but the up and down cylinder is what is going to raise and lower the snow blower to get it off the ground for you so uh, you'll also use a loader joystick to control that now this is a two stage and whether you have the 47 inch or the uh, 54 inch both are going to be a two stage and so essentially you had this main auger here that's driving the snow up up this way and then towards the chute and then you can see the other auger back in there and that's going to uh, rotate this way I believe and just shoot it right up there and, and right on out and so typically you're going to see these in the used market and maybe the 2800 ish on the very bottom end uh, unless you get lucky you know up to about 3600 or so for a, a you know a nearly new uh, 54 inch variant and so that's going to include um, the snowblower itself the quick hitch and this extra adapter which is going to have for the snowblower a bearing in here which the pto shaft will go through uh, and then some miscellaneous parts as well snowblowers are great uh, for removing large amounts of snow However, they do have some drawbacks as well. One is going to be the fact that you do have to take your loader off. So you're going to be completely removing, removing the loader assembly, which in and of itself is about a 90 second job. That's not a big deal to do. Uh, to mount a snowblower, it's going to be maybe, you know, in the ballpark of 10 minutes, a little bit more potentially, um, if you're not doing it very often, which well, I suppose most folks probably aren't. Um, so you, you, are, you do have that limitation there of being able to use your loader or your snowblower. You can't quickly go back and forth. 
Um, also, if you have trace amounts of snow, like what we have right now, or even a, an inch or two, they're not super efficient at, at driving that up. So you kind of have to plow them into bigger piles and then do the, uh, the snow blower, turn it on that way. And so that's another drawback uh, versus some of the other options. Okay, getting into the next snow blower option, which is gonna be our um, second most expensive uh, snow removal option that you have for the one series tractor. We're gonna be talking about the three point snow blower, which you can see right here. And now this is a 54 inch rear mount snow blower. It actually came with the tractor that you can see there. Um, this is gonna have the same kind of concept. You're gonna have a main, let's get it down there. Um, you're gonna have your, your main auger that's going this way and then you'll have another one inside there that's gonna drive the snow up and out. So a couple of the variants that these can come with are gonna be one here as you see it, which is gonna be the manual chute rotation and the manual um, deflector height adjustment. And what the deflector does is essentially you can raise it up or down and it will uh, determine how, if your snow's gonna shoot further out or if it's gonna shoot further up as it's being released. And so this one here has a manual rotation so you can see how it's rotating around there. Um, now the other option, and you may have seen it in one of my other videos, uh, I think it's called something like Frontier SB1154 Snowblower or something like that. Um, I'll post a link for it. But you can take a look there, and that's mounted on my tractor right now, and it's going to have a hydraulic uh, cylinder over here to hydraulically control left to right, and then another hydraulic cylinder to hydraulically control um, this deflector right here up and down. So check that out too. So again, this is gonna be a category one, uh, three point hitch type of installation. It's gonna run on the 540 RPM rear PTO. I do have the other half of the PTO shaft. It's just being stored inside right now. But, and there's no pressure on this right now. It's just, it's just sitting there, so. Um, but that's how it's gonna operate. You're gonna to have to drive in reverse with this option, which is one of the downfalls. Now, some of the benefits to this option here are gonna be the fact that you can mount it on the back end of your tractor, meaning that you can leave your, your loader on the front, okay? So it's also a little bit cheaper. If you're looking uh, to have a lot of deep snows or expecting that or typically receiving that, this is gonna handle a, a lot of snow at a time. You can see these sidewalls here are very high. I, I guess I haven't measured them recently. I don't know if they're 20, 22, 24 inches tall, but they're very high sidewalls on there too. So you can really handle a lot of snow. Uh, the downfall is again, you need to drive in reverse in order to use this. Now, I do sell uh, MK Martin, which is a manufacturer, an aftermarket manufacturer. I can get these in green, I can get them in orange, I can get them in black, I can get them in blue if you want them. And they're gonna make a variant where you're gonna mount it on the back end of the snowblower, but this portion here is actually gonna be facing forward. So with this actual snowblower here, you're gonna have to drive into the snow this way, but with the uh, inverted snowblowers, so this part is facing forward, you can actually just drive right over the snow and it'll, it'll collect it right behind it and blow it out. All right, so moving on now, we're gonna be talking about another front mount snow removal option here. This is gonna be the hydraulic snow plow. And so this is 54 inches. They do make a 60 inch wide variant as well, or you may have seen in one of my videos where I um, had wings that have been installed on either end. I think those were nine inches each, so adding another 18 inches in, in overall width there. So there's some options there for you to play around with. I think maybe Artillion offers some options there too to expand the width and they're, they're rubber, uh, if I recall correctly. So that's a, a different version there too. But anyways, you're also gonna have a, a quick hitch that's involved, same thing with the snow blower, okay? But you're gonna have an extra cylinder, which is gonna be this, this one right here, you can see. So that's gonna allow you to angle left and right with the, uh, with the plow itself. And then the up and down cylinder is simply gonna raise it up off the ground or not. So again, you're gonna control this with, with your loader joystick. So you're gonna be removing the loader from the tractor. It's gonna mount right down to the frame, right down here. And then you're gonna plug into your hydraulics here and then uh, control it with your joystick. So what I like about this option is that you can handle a little bit of snow or a lot of snow. So if you have just a couple of inches on the ground, you're gonna be able to take care of that. And also if you get 8, 10, 12 inches on the ground, you're gonna be able to take care of that also. One of the downsides to the snow plow is that you can run out of space to push your snow. Um, I've done that before with uh, an X7 series tractor that I've had, you know, done that with a one series as well, where, you know, you push it off your driveway, you push it over and in, into a corner here somewhere, and you just keep piling up and you just keep getting dumped on and the snow keeps pushing out and you really, you just run out of room to be able to move the snow. And where with the snow blower, you can just shoot it up and, and make the pile grow. Here, you're limited to what your tractor can do to raise and push it up.
price point on the snowplow is typically going to be in that $1,500, $1,600 ballpark. Again, that's going to include the hydraulic quick hitch and the other parts that you need. Okay, moving on to what might be my favorite snow removal option, and that is going to be the snow pusher. Okay, and that's this contraption right here. It's going to mount in place of your bucket, and so this version here is set up for the John, here, John Deere quick attach system there on the, uh, on the loader, on the carrier arm, so you can see where you would just simply drop your bucket down. You can leave your loader on, okay? But you would drop your your bucket down here and then you're just going to put the carrier arms right up right up underneath there and lock it in place, okay? Now this particular unit here is 66 inches wide. This is larger than what I recommend for the 1 series. Right, you're going to want a 54 inch snow pusher for the 1 series tractor, anything larger and what's going to happen is you're going to run out of traction and that's just simply not going to do you any good. So 54 inch in width um, is going to be the appropriate dimension there. You're going to have this option to have a reversible cutting edge that's made out of either this really heavy duty, uh, at least one inch thick uh, rubber. Okay. Or, I can show you over here, we have a steel option as well. So you can see here, again, this is reversible. Okay. So I do have some videos of the snow pushers in action out there. They're very good tools. Uh, you're going to have adjustable skid shoes on either end here as well. Okay. And you can see here in the corner, the construction of this corner here, you'll see a lot of snow pushers out there that have simply a supporty bar that go from here to over here and really allows the snow to get trapped in behind there where these have a reinforced side plate and really the whole construction and design of this is to allow the snow to keep rolling forward and, and staying out of those corners and, and releasing when you need it to. Up top you can see these holes that are along the edges here and there's one, another one, another one, another one there. And what that is for is for a back drag. And again there's a video I have showing this, but this it's a steel piece that will bolt on and entirely enclose this section all along the top here. And I'll show you one of those in just a second. And so what that allows you to do is roll or dump all the way forward. And so pretend this is all enclosed here and you can go up next to a building and drag snow away from there. So it can be very effective. It's something you can add on after the fact if you moved or if you have another location you need to take care of. So you don't have to worry about ordering that up front, but uh, we can ship these anywhere. Uh, sizes ranging from 54 up to 72 inches in the HLA 1500 series. You can also get the 2500, 3500 series and so on. This is the back drag I was talking about. You can see it's going to include the, the hardware, but it's just eight bolts. You know, four along the top here and two on either end. And this is going to completely enclose the top side of that snow pusher. You'll see a lot of the other ones out there are simply going to have a little strip of steel and it's not going to enclose it entirely and that's basically not going to do you a whole lot of good. This is going to capture all the snow that's in there. There's nowhere for it to go and it's going to pull it all away. So a 54 inch snow pusher is going to run you about a thousand dollars unless you do want to add on that optional, optional back drag which is going to bring it up to about thirteen hundred dollars uh, right in that ballpark there. So a very affordable option. Again, the benefits of a snow pusher are the fact that you get to leave the loader on your tractor so you can quickly switch back and forth from a snow pusher to a bucket to a set of pallet forks uh, and so on. So it makes it very versatile, uh, very user friendly to be able to switch and do different tasks with on a, on a quick basis. Uh, plus the price point there, that combination too is very inexpensive compared to some of these other options. Okay, we're getting down there now in the, the fairly cheap options here, and so this is going to be a rear blade, category one three-point blade. It's simply going to mount on the back of your tractor here on the three-point hitch. You can uh, angle this left or right. You can drive over the snow, you can uh, drive in reverse and push the snow. Obviously there's a lot of options out there for three-point blades. This is 60 inches wide. Okay, which is wider than the tractor, but typically you're going to have that blade angled, uh, which you can see right here, how you're going to angle it there. Just pull this pin out, and you can rotate it, and then put the pin back down and lock it in place. Typically you're going to find these in the seven, dollars $800 price, brand new, uh, for a John Deere or Frontier, maybe a little bit cheaper for an aftermarket, and you're going to find them in the three, four, five hundred dollars $500 range typically used and in good condition. This can also be a multi-purpose tool, as obviously you could use this for grading a driveway, 
uh, pushing some material around too that you're looking to, to clear out, maybe even debris. So it does have multi-functions that way. Okay, now we're moving on to the cheapest snow removal option, which is your bucket. <laughs> That's already on your tractor, and so that is definitely a cheap snow removal option. Uh, there's some reasons that you should not use that. Uh, clearly the reason you should is because you already have it. But uh, you want to be very careful wearing the edges of your bucket down, okay? That's something that can wear really quickly. You'll get rounded edges and wear this, this bottom plate all the way back to the side plate there and that can uh, wear it out quickly. These are not replaceable edges on here, so you want to take care of your bucket. Uh, also, they can dig down, they can scrape, they can damage any uh, surfaces that you have there and do have an ability to do that just because they're almost designed to cut or to, you know, to, to scrape and, and kind of do that. And so they have a tendency to uh, take things, pick things up that you don't want to be picked up. And so what we have on here are going to be called edge tamers. And you may have seen these uh, posted. Tractor Time with Tim has some good videos on here too. And we happen to have a set of them in stock. But uh, these are going to keep your, your bucket up off the ground, off the surface just a little bit there. And allow you to ride along there and, and take care of the snow removal this way. Uh, you know you're going to be in the $100, $150 ball, ballpark for these brand new. Um, I don't think you really need a set of three on a bucket this size on the 10 25R, but I, I just happen to have a set of three here, so I threw all of them on. So I do want to talk about the float function of your loader joystick, and that's going to apply whether or not you're using the loader, the snow blower, the snow pusher, or even the snow plow. And so what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you, most of you hopefully know this function already, but if you don't, this is a very important feature here and it's going to be on your front end loader. And so you typically have, think of four functions which are raising and lowering and curling and dumping of the loader joystick, but there's a detent position uh, beyond the uh, lowering uh, function that is going to allow you to put this in float. And what float does is it's going to take the um, down pressure off of the loader itself. It's just going to be gravity that's going to allow the loader itself or the bucket, whatever it is, to just follow the contour of the ground, not put down pressure and dig into it, but just allow it to ride that surface there and uh, scrape evenly and cleanly along there. So I'm going to fire this tractor up, get those glow plugs going and put it in neutral there. So I am going to lower this down a little bit so we've got it about level right now but I'm going to actually hit the float so I'm going to push this forward and then I'm going to keep pushing it forward until you'll see it release it almost pops like that to get it back out I go in this way and pop it right back out so you go in the float and then pop right back out you can pick that right back up. And then again, that's down pressure there, lifting the tires up off the ground. Beyond that, in the float, we're back down on there. 